Now, he's going to get up on and pummel, so he got a different range. See, when he's down here, he gets up on the underhook. It's very easy for me to beat him, okay? But the more posture I get and more underhook he gets up, he gets on his elbow. Now, you know, I can still beat him here, but I also have the option for the wizard. So we're going to wizard, okay? But here's the thing. When I wizard him, just come up. I'm moving my legs so you can see. Is I'm going over his arm and I'm going under his leg. The reason I'm doing this is it gives me some control, but it also ties up his bottom leg. I'm lifting it. Because if I go like this, and now he takes his leg out, and now he starts getting up, now things aren't changing, not for my favor. I want to keep him down, you know? So when he hits his underhook and I hit my wizard, I'm catching his leg. So he tries to take that leg out, he can't. I have his leg. So now I'm not letting him scramble, okay? So when he's on the bottom, he wants to scramble. When I'm on top, I don't want to scramble. I want control, okay? And if the game switches, and I'm on my back in a bad spot, I got to scramble, okay? So no, that, that's kind of the concept here, all right? But now I'm going to wizard him down, so you're going to start seeing a lot more mechanics now, okay? So I'm here, he hits an underhook. Now I need to wizard him hard. So I'm actually going to have to plant my hands. Some guys just catch like this. That's because he's moving slow. In real life, you're, he's going he's gonna to hit that underhook hard, and you're going to need a post. So I'm going to wizard, and I'm going to catch his leg. And I like to try to catch it where the tights are. If I go towards the knee, it gives me more pressure, but it gives him a chance to limp arm out. I want to have some tights. I want to have something with some friction. All right? My arm will have to go back for pressure. So to do that, my leg's gonna come back and I'm gonna drive my right shoulder down. So, see how he's on his elbow? I, I wanna put him on a low shoulder. Means I wanna put him back on his shoulder. So I'm gonna wizard this way. Now he's on his shoulder. This is what I call a low shoulder, okay? Now from here, I cover this spot. You can cover on the head for more control or you can cover on the neck, neck for more grip. It just depends on what you feel is more comfortable at the time. From here, I'm gonna lean onto him, I'm gonna pick my knee out, and I'm gonna figure four. Notice my knees are off the ground. If my knees are on the ground, he, Nick is still in the fight. Knees off the ground, he's not going anywhere. This right here is a quarter Nelson, okay? You play it different if he's down or if he's on a Bottom referee is like a turtle position. It's just similar, but just where your hand position is, okay? So I, I'm gonna hit my quarter. Now, what I'm gonna do after I hit my quarter and I pass, is I'm gonna go straight to uh, a screw choke or a darce choke. I'm trying to, long time ago I heard it called uh, by the Japanese a screw choke. I think that actually describes it better, but darce choke or whatever, it's it's the same thing. It's just whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so let me, Turn the it this way. There we go. So he's he's down. He comes up. I catch and I I whiz it down and lift the leg. Put him on a low shoulder. Frame. Now you can go straight to the quarter, but I actually come here and I work my knee out. Then I lock. Now from here, he does not want to hold my body with that underhook anymore. So he's going to drop it. And when he does, I have an option where I want to go. So what I'm going to do now is this hand's going to go over and grab his head and I'm going to lift his head up and now this arm is going to reach as deep as I can. I put my ear on his body and I drop to my right knee. That's just so I can dip my shoulder. Now what I like to do is come here and lock my own tricep because right now I already have him locked. Okay. And this is important for a couple of reasons, okay? I'll get to them in a second. Now from here, I take my arm out and I figure it up high. Now I'm going to re-drive in and start to get off my knees and tilt, okay? I lock and I'm gonna tilt. That's why I, it was called a screw choke. You're like screwing it in. You don't wanna just sit here tilt, okay? 
Make sure when you're doing this star stroke, you try to get as deep on your own arm as you can, and don't frame against yourself. People do this a lot. They're trying to squeeze, and they're not. This, they're actually their arm is not letting them squeeze anymore. Let this come up. If it comes up here, let it. You want to crush them. You want so you can make you make the smallest circle between your arms and body as possible. Don't come here and frame against yourself because you're, believe it or not, this is one of my teach, this is the number one common problem. If they're squeezing, but they're framing against their own grip. Just let that sucker come up. Squeeze them in. Use your legs to drive some pressure. You know, don't just sit there on your knees and trying to do it all. All it does is introduce them to the game. Use your power from your legs, your stomach, you know, drive from your feet, okay? So, just go down a second. So when I was here, and the reason I go here first is because of the fact that anytime you start looking for like a darse or anything, what, what good players do is that they bring their head back and they start to bring this arm and hug it to their body. And what they do is they give you this huge spot so you can't lock your arms. You know, I got to wrap a, a lasso around his arm and neck. So if I pull him in like this, it's easy to wrap that lasso around his head and arm. But if his head's back and his arm's down, that's a huge lock. I'm not going to get it. He's going to break my grip and then he'll be on my wrist. That's the first thing he's going to do. So going for the choke is not worth it. So that's why when I'm here, I actually grab the head first and pull it in. Because now he tries to pull his head back, he can't. And it gives me room to make a lasso in already choke him. Okay? Now if you have your own way of doing it and that, that works, then do it. Just make sure that you can control him. Because who you beat and catch with darts chokes, always remember, you got to make sure who you submit with them counts. If you're going against a guy that's never, doesn't even know what the choke is, and you get him, you know, you should feel good and proud. But as you go up the ladder with better and better opponents, your gear is going to, your, your setups are start failing and your chokes start failing. It's not you. You just got to clean up your technique a little bit. So um, that's why I'm explaining to this, because in my years I've seen a lot of problems, okay? So, when I was here in my quarter, I go around and I push his arm across, see? He's going to drop it anyways, but I push it across with my arm. If it's here, I get my own leg out of the way and get in and lock my grip, okay? I'm in this position, he underhooks, I come back, whizzer him down, get his head, I control his leg, slide out, quarter. Now from this position, I go, lock deep. Now I drive in, and tilt, and get my finish. Okay, got it. Tilt. If you keep failing on the tilt, and you're kind of longer, and sometimes troubling with small guys, I'm gonna ask you to highlight the mount, okay? Because it actually, if the choke is better, okay? But it's good for MMA too, because if you fail on it, you can go to mount hit, okay? So I'm gonna show you the difference. So he's here, same time your side there. Okay, and I have my chill, okay? Now I'm here and I can't get his resistance. What I'm going to do, shuffle step, and I'm going to high leg over. You okay? Yeah. And now I'm just, see how my elbow's away from my body? I'm going to bring it in and tilt. And that way if he gets out, he's ready in my mouth position. I'm just making a little better tactics. So if I fail, I always have a way out. That's a very important thing. Okay, so I'm in half guard. Even if I have the underdog, he cages on me. Bring him. And now he pummels. Puts it down. Lock. Slide. And I have my tap. 
If that fails, high leg. And now I have position. Okay? Once again, countering the underhook get up, wizarding him down, putting him on a low shoulder. Okay? Low shoulder, slide by, grabbing his head, and tilt. Okay? Now we're going to go to another option. Okay? Same counter to the underhook getup, except when we hit our quarter, we're actually going to go to the other side. Okay? So he's here, and he gets that underhook getup, a wizard down, stand up side by, block my quarter. Now I'm off my knees, and what I'm going to do is my hand is going to backhand the back of his head. It's going to go here. So I'm here. Side. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I take this pit stop. Don't go try to time this underhook because when you turn that corner, that's where he's going to be going for. It. So he's actually going to get an underhook on you again. And I'll show you that. So right here, just pummel on you when I switch. So I went like this. I come across it from my underhook. He hits the underhook. Okay. That's why. I call it a pit stop. When we get our pass, we go behind, go here. Because there's, there's no way you can get my underhook. I can easily cradle him, except we're going to go back and we're going to attack him. Okay? Get my quarter, bring him down. Stand up side by. I'm here. Here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that pressure on his head. I'm going to drive my shoulder on his head. My knee is going to come here. I'm going to let his head out and I'm going to grab around his, his head and arm. Okay. Now my knee is going to go over his head and against my arm. And what that does is it locks his arm in place. And now I'm going to push off my hand. I'm going to rotate backwards and finish. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a little touch. Okay, so let's see what angle would be best there. Okay, so when I'm here, I'm like this. And when I switch, I actually keep my knee to my elbow because it locks the arm in place. And it makes the choke so strong that all I have to do is lock and squeeze. That makes the choke more powerful and there's not enough, there's not much adjustment. Okay, so if I'm here, let's say that I'm on this side and I'm here. I will go from this position, over, knee to the arm, push off my leg, and I'm going to drive my knee to the mat. Now I'm going to slide my leg back, and I'm going to sink my head to his shoulder. And lock. Okay. So the first one I showed you, was we, we hit the wizard to the quarter, directly to the darts. Now we're going wizard to the quarter, pass the side mount on the other side. We, from there, we could go to mount or whatever, but now we're switching back to what I call a switch darts, which there's a lot of different setups for it, but it's really smooth, and your opponent probably won't be seeing it coming at all. Okay? so. Here, he hits the underhook, I wizard, put him on a low shoulder, slide, hit my quarter, come to the position, step up, catch, switch back, and finish.